this is Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today I'd like to introduce you to the June 2014 My Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up! titled Pinwheel Party. This kit has all the supplies you'll need including the stamps, the inks, and the special adhesive for making 24 festive pinwheels and or pinwheel gifts and the directions to make these pinwheels are included in the kit. Starting this month Stampin' Up! has made the direction sheet much more visual. You'll look, if you can see from last month, we still have the supply list, but instead of giving step-by-step -step directions with just words and a map, we have actual photos step-by-step. -step. Let's quickly assemble the basic pinwheel. First, you'll take one of your straws and you're going to find the holes that are in the pinwheel, um, the pinwheel base here. There's a hole, there's a hole. Okay, there's one on each of these sections. So you're going to take that, that side of a section and you're going to curl it using your straw. And you're just giving it a slight curve all the way around. After you've done that, you're going to take one of your brads and you're going to start with one hole and poke it through. This is going to become the top part of my pinwheel. Then I'll take each one of these corners that has a hole and I'll add that to my brad like this, layering it up. Now after I've got that, then I just push it down and through to the hole that goes right through the center. These are already pre-punched, so you don't have to worry about creating any holes yourself. You'll open up the brad prongs in the back, smoosh it down, and you've got your pinwheel. Pretty easy. You can also stamp these flags and attach them to your pinwheels. So let me show you some of the items that I've already created. Here's just a basic pinwheel on one of the sticks or straws, and all I did is attach it with the glue dots that come in the kit. I've done that with several of them. And then I had my youngest son help me out. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this very well in the, in the video. But he helped me and he filled up this wonderful jar <laughs> with all those glass beads. We tied a piece of organza white ribbon on it. And then we're going to stick these in there and put them as a centerpiece in the middle of our table when we go to Grandma and Grandpa's for 4th of July. Also shown in the kit are just the straws themselves with the banners attached to them. And you just take your glue dots and stick them right on there. Keep in mind that if you want your, your banners to not slide up and down your straws, you'll want to make sure that your glue dots are also touching your straws after you've attached your, or be, before you've um, secured your flag to it. And all the stamps that come in the kit, let me show you those again quickly, make up these images. So there's party, celebrate, and then of course the, the stars. Very fun, simple stamps that make all of that fun look to your straws and your pinwheels. Also shown in the kit is a little prepackaged cookie. I've got a couple in there because you get all these cellophane bags with it. And then all you do is take your glue dot after you've wrapped your twine around that also comes in the kit. I know, this kit is just loaded with stuff. Um, after you've wrapped your cookie um, with the cellophane bag with the twine, then you'll just attach your pinwheel on top with some glue dots. And I've stuck one of the sections of the banners with one of the, the clips. Yes, you get the clips too. It's amazing. I know. It's I can't believe it. I've made almost all of these things just with one kit, and I get two kits every single month. So I'm going to bring the extra kit up to Grandma and Grandpa's, and we're going to create pinwheels um, together with the kids. Here's something else you can do. Now, I don't have any little girls, but I was in the aisle at Joanne's and um, one of our local craft stores here, and I saw these adorable headbands. So, um, I don't know, just attach it to a headband. with. I used a dimensional instead of the glue dots. It seems to hold a lot better. And then you've got some fun headbands to wear to celebrate Independence Day. This is a gift that I'm going to bring up to the cabin to give Grandma and Grandpa. They live at the cabin, sorry. Um, it's just a bucket that's filled with 
supplies for s'mores. So we've got the, your marshmallows and chocolate bars and graham crackers and I attached the um, one of the pinwheels on here with the brad rather than a glue dot. So I just took and wrapped the brad prongs around the back as you can see. No glue involved. And then I took one of the straws and put a festive banner on it and stuck that into the jar. You can see photos of all these projects on my blog as well. Okay, um, let me share what else I've got. Let's see, we did the pinwheel on a stick, just the straw, the cookie, the headband, the s'mores gift. Now I want to make a page for you. So I'm going to start out with a coordinating color. This color isn't one that comes in the kit, but um, Marina Mist goes really well with Night of Navy, Real Red, Smoky Slate, which is that light, light gray in the kit, and of course the white. Anything goes with white. And I'm going to first start out by scoring my my cardstock. This is 12 by 12 cardstock, and I'm using our Simply Scored tool with the um, with the stylus tool in here. And I'm just going to go down the edge, make sure that it's flush with the with the left edge and the top. And I'm just going to go down the left the left edge here with the stylus. I'm using the larger end of the stylus and I'm going to go down with two stripes and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to use the smaller end because that just makes the crease a little bit deeper. A pulling action is the best way to use this tool. Now you don't have to do this this design on your pages. You can leave the creases off but um, I just wanted to introduce you to a fun tool that we have. Then I'm going to flip it over and you can see if I zoom in just a little bit you can see, oh don't zoom out, you don't want to see my dirty desk, you can see the score line is showing up ever so slightly. It's nice, a nice ridge. Okay, on the other page, zoom back out a bit here, on the other page I'm going to take and I'm going to cut some strips of marina mist. That page is going to start out white. So I'm going to have a blue on one side and a white on the other. But I want to attach some strips to the bottom of this. So I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut. And I'm not actually going to cut this piece because I ran out of marina mist, but I'm going to show you where the measurements are. So if you want to get um, the same measurements I have, you'll want to start at the one and a half inch mark, cut, and then you'll take what you have left over bring it to the two inch mark, cut, and then one more strip that's two and a half now inches. Now that I've wide. got those pieces, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to use my Simply Scored tool once again, but this time I'm going to use this template on top. And I can't remember the name of it, so I'll just add that to um, the little side words that I put on my video. <laughs> But this one has all these fun little designs on it. It also has an overlay that you need to have there because that helps to guide your stylus. Um, when you have your paper on top, you can't necessarily see where those lines are because you're not following this. So you need that guide on top. Now what I've found is that the with the Simply Scored tool, and if I turn this to the side, you can probably see it better, your 12 inch paper is actually a little bit shorter than the full length of these designs. So I've made an extra piece of cardstock that helps me out in centering this better. So I just slip it between this piece and the overlay and I lay my cardstock down underneath, put this on top, and it just goes right up to that white edge. You can see that there. Okay, so I'm going to position it so that I can get these. Then we come in, and again, use the, the larger ball of your stylus first, and just go down. After you've got that done, you can see I've got the crease going in that way, but I want it to come outward like I did with the other paper. I made it face outward. So we'll shift that out of the way. The next step is to come in with your paper snips and trim. And if you are one that has trouble trimming, you can trim right on that line, or you can trim a little bit further away so that you see that crease as a decorative accent. Okay, what I've got for you now is my three different pieces already pre-scored, trimmed, and layered up, ready to go. 
I used these three sections of my template. This one, this one, and this one. So this was the highest one, the medium, and then the shortest one there. Okay. All right. So now it's time to layer everything up. The first piece is going to go down with just some simple snail. You can use your glue dots that come in your kit if you don't have any of this kind of adhesive. But I recommend getting it. And we'll just layer that down at the bottom of our 12 by 12 white. And the next piece is going to go on with some dimensionals. So let me see if I can find those. Here they are. And you don't want to go too far up to the waves because we're going to be fitting something underneath. Okay, stick those down. Oh, it's looking so fun with the shadows. Last piece will do the same way. Always use up those edges of your dimensionals. Don't throw them away. They stick too. <laughs> Alright, let's add this. Alright, so so far we've got the waves and we've got our pre-scored accent sheet for the left page. Now I'm going to show you how to make a fun boat. Okay, we've got our pinwheel pieces. We're going to cut straight across as straight as you can. So we're going to cut that in half. Then we need our paper trimmer. We're going to grab one piece and we're going to bring it to the one inch mark on our paper. You're going to trim. Hold on tight so it doesn't move on you. This is the base of our boat and this piece here becomes one of the sails. Then we're going to trim this piece so it's a little bit bigger, our extra sail. So we're just going to go to the half inch mark and trim and now we've got our other sail. Now if you look at this monochromatic looking boat or one designer paper piece there, it's, it's kind of boring. So then we decide to flip over pieces and if you've got other pieces that you've already pre-cut you can create different looking boats depending on what pieces you have. So how fun is that? Different boats just by mixing up the papers. Now I got this idea from my upline demonstrator, my friend Susan Campfield, who by the way just posted this on her blog so I'll send a link to that um, on my blog post when I share these items so that you can see that. But Susan created cards for us just this weekend um, that we made at her meeting making so that we could make these cute little boats and they're adorable and she didn't want to waste that extra piece that gets trimmed off, that half inch piece, so you can see you can decorate the inside of your card as well with that half inch piece. So we're going to take and add those boats to our pages I'll do that and then I'll come right back. I've attached one of our boats just using the snail and you might want to leave room. I didn't do this but you might want to just have snail on just a tiny little portion behind these sails because then you can slide photos right behind. So on my next boat because it's going to go in the other layer of water here it's going to lift up a little bit higher. So I did put snail along the bottom there and then I'm going to attach it you can see that there's waves on the water so these these boats have to be tipping a little bit back and forth <laughs> all right and then we have dimensionals on the back of our sails here so that when I add them they will pop up the same height as the boat base I've got a little bit of boat sticking out here so we'll just flip that over trim that off we want room for our pictures so don't make your scrapbook pages be filled completely with your art. You want to have room so that you can add photos later. So now I've got my boats on there. The next thing I'm going to do for my set of pages is I'm going to add some brads that accent the water here and then also attach to the top. So I took my ruler and I went about a half of an inch away from the paper here because if I take one of my brads and I put it down I can see that if I put it exactly where I want it in the upper corner, it's about a half of an inch in, half of an inch down from where that prong, oh, you can't see that, half of an inch, half of an inch. And so I wanted to do that, that measurement in 
and down from the top so that it would look nice and even. So I marked it half inch here, half inch there from the bottom. And then I spaced them out. So I took this next one and I placed it here where the water, uh, yeah, got to zoom out. <laughs> um, I placed it here where the water is, is touching. And so I wanted another brad right there. Okay. can barely see that. Sorry. I'm going to zoom out even further. You can see my messy desk. There we go. Okay. So now that I've got those two marks on here, then I was able to measure between. And it came to about a half, an, an inch and a half between those two pieces. So I just marked three quarter of an inch um, between and that marked the halfway point. So that's how far I spaced it from the top. If you're a math person, you know what I'm talking about. If not, just put your brads down. <laughs> I always tell that to my customers who just kind of cringe sometimes. Not all of them do, but some of them do when I start talking math. They're like, oh my gosh, Rachel's talking math again. So we want holes half an inch, another three quarters of an inch up, another three quarters of an inch up, and that's where we'll add our brads here. All right, so now I've got my brads on, and I'm going to attach a smaller boat to the left-hand side in the upper corner next to my fun title that I stamped using the stamps in our kit. So I've just made a smaller version, and there's really no math involved in this. I just cut down my, my, my uh, pieces just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to attach those with dimensionals. And I've already curved this little flag here with my straw, or you could also, if you have a tool like this on hand, it's a little bit sturdier than a straw, it's called a bone folder. And that helps to give the curves. Okay, the last accent that I want to do is the twine. So you get this nice little roll of baker's twine in here. And I thought I'd just quickly explain at the end here what I'm doing. I'm just taking our twine and I'm going on the sides of these brads. The brads are acting like adhesive and holding the twine in place for me. I'm going to tighten it. So if that one came along that side, this one comes along this side. And just like that. I have a nice little fun design in there. Okay, so we are done with our pages. Fun, huh? All right. Next, I'm going to show you how to do a bow. Um, a bow using our pinwheel design. So let me take one of our pinwheels and we're going to trim off the two opposite sides from each other. It doesn't matter which side they are because, again, your pinwheel is symmetrical all the way around. We'll just trim off these sides so that we have what looks like a little bow tie. All right, next we're going to take our bone folder or your straw that comes in the kit and you're going to curve, add some, breaking the fibers is what we're doing. You're adding some curve there so that it will fold over nice and neatly and doesn't bend in half. This idea was presented to us demonstrators on a training video that we received on this kit. Okay, we're going to use our glue dots and we're going to stick on a glue dot to each of these corners. Then we bring them directly to this center point. Do you see where that hole is in the center that we use to put our pinwheel together? We're going to bring the points of this right up to that point, that center point. Keeping that curve, don't bend it in half. With one of your sections that you cut off, you're going to trim another portion. I'm going to my paper cutter. I think I trimmed mine about yeah, three quarters of an inch wide. Make a flat edge on one end. Use some glue dots. Oh, first curve it. I'm going to break the fibers to get it to curve around nice and neat. Then attach the glue dot. And we'll just take the sheet off like that, then we can see them better. To one end. And this is actually the front of our bow, because we like that design. We're going to attach this to the back. 
we're going to measure how far it takes to wrap around so that we have a nice little bubble here in the middle. Trim that in the back and then we need to attach that with a glue dot. Then we want one of our banners. These cute things come in the kit, ready to punch out and stamp. I know I haven't stamped yet, have I? What's that all about? Stamp your art out. You know, you gotta stamp. Rachel, I gotta stamp. Okay, so we're gonna attach our stars. And I like using my larger stamp pads. I'm sorry, I have a collection of them, so why not? We'll stamp our stars on one end of our banner. And we'll stamp our celebrate. on the other end of our banner, like so. Okay, and you'd do it a lot neater because you wouldn't be rushing trying to fit in a bazillion projects before everyone gets too bored of watching your YouTube video. Then you'll attach that with glue dots in there. You'll wrap your cellophane Cinch bag. It with that twine that's in there. And then we're gonna stick this on with glue dots. And um, this is what they turn out to look like. They're so gosh darn cute. So this idea, thank you Stampin' Up, came from our trainers there. So those would be great gifts to give people on the 4th of July. Alright, another um, idea is to make your pinwheel twirly. Now we don't have curved straws, but you can get them to move around in a circle so that instead of having a glue dot that twists off, if you're going to put these in kids' hands, you want them to be able to twirl because they're going to want to twist them around. My boys did that immediately when they saw them. So the way that you do that, and I'm just going to give you tips, I'm not going to um, walk you through the whole process, but when you put your, your um, pinwheel together, instead of just attaching it with the brad, you'll want to glue dot everything down in there. And I'll have photos on my blog page so that you can see the step-by-step -step process of making this. But you'll put glue dots in there, then you'll attach this, and that way when these prongs are not all the way attached to the back, because they have to kind of stick outward some, this will still stay down. These pieces will still stay down here and they won't be popping up like they just did for me. Okay, so you can see I've got a little bit of a gap there. So then you take your straw, see if I can find a straw here, and you're going to take your paper punch, flatten it down a little bit, stick it in the paper punch, center it, punch it, and now you've got a hole. And that's what your brad prongs that's what these little guys will stick through. Okay? And then you'll just take your pliers, your plier tool and pliers tool and you will twist them down so that you have a little bit of room in there. Now, if you want to get even more technical and you want them to um, move a little bit smoothly, smoothly and they're not wobbling back and forth, then what you could do is put um, a nut or bolt, um, a what is that? A nut back there or even better, you can get like a washer in there. I don't know if you can see that. But that will help you to make it more smooth and it doesn't tip as much back and forth like this one does. This is very tippy. So those are ideas for making your pinwheels turn. Okay, the wreath. This is the grand one of them all. Here's Where my wreath. All right, let's zoom out a little bit so you can see it a little bit more. Dirty desk. Okay, so what I did is I went to Joann's, again, the local craft store, and I bought a basic wreath. And this wreath was a filled-in one so that I could have my tags that I knew I was going to put through the middle attached to it. And, of course, they need to attach a little bit better. I'd recommend two dimensionals rather than just one on the back of these tags. But um, what I did is I just attached my pinwheels all the way around. I used 12 pinwheels, so half of the kit covered a, a wreath, and then I filled in the gaps with some white organza ribbon, which you could fill in with anything. There's lots of wreaths out there on Pinterest. You can Google the um, Paper Pumpkin June kit called Pinwheel Party, and you can see lots of wreaths out there as well. This is my version of it. So then I took some of our silver, um, our silver ribbon, brought it through to 
to attach these tags, which again, I use the clips that come in the kit. Um, I use the banners that come in the kit to make these cute little banners. Let's see if I have that piece somewhere. Oh, I probably don't. That's okay. Um, but you're just going to take and stamp on one side, then flip it. Um, and stamp without re-inking on the other end and then when you fold it in half you get that two-tone look with the blue. I also used, here I have it right here, I know where I put that, I did, I really did. So here we go, that's what our our banner looked like before we actually taped it down. And then I used our star framelit set, the smallest star, to uh, to punch out a little star from our silver foil paper and then the metro type alphabet was the one that I used for the the happy fourth section there there's the star in the foil paper so that's how I made my wreath and it was hanging in our doorway I'm gonna put it back on there after this video the last idea is what do you do with all the leftover straws because if you're gonna make the wreath if you're gonna make the pinwheels if you're gonna make a page you've got all these leftover straws so then you take and you cut them up into little tiny pieces. You find some beads at your hardware store and you get some of our thick baker's twine or any other string would work too I'm sure like an elastic string might even be better too. But then you make necklaces or you bring them to the 4th of July festivities for the kids to make necklaces out of. And um, those are my fun ideas. Let's see if I can gather those all into this really really messy space and you can see them all at once. <laughs> okay, I couldn't do it. I couldn't fit them all in. But just to review, you can make your basic pinwheel, of course, and put it on a stick. You can make it move. You can make your straws. You can attach your pinwheel to the cookies. You can attach your pinwheel as a bow to a fun little bag that's been cinched up. Decorate a jar for, for some mores and put your flag in there. Put your pinwheel on there. Decorate just a jar filled with glass beads and stick all of your pinwheels inside. You've got headband that's decorated. You've got your card with the fun boat on it. You've got your scrapbook pages with the boats on it. And you've got your necklace, of course, with all those extra leftover beads. And you've got your wreath. So, <laughs> I hope that that gave you lots of ideas for decorating for the 4th of July, Independence Day. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe so that you can catch more paper pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my blog so that you can view close-up photos of all these projects and to see photos of other paper pumpkin kit ideas. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and I hope you enjoyed seeing my messy stamp room just a little bit more. <laughs> now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.